I wanted to migrate over to Seiza and I wanted to ask you three, um, what was the inspiration behind Seiza? What's this whole thing about the staking simulator? Can you give us more details of what's going on? The screenshots look really good. Um, what's going on? And I, I have a feeling that Ruslan was, is working on this because if you're not familiar with Ruslan, it goes by the username Vantis Subhuman and he's been involved with Cardano for a while and he was pulling statistics back in the day. And um, I, I have a feeling that he's working on this as well. So if you three wanted to say something about Seiza and what's going on there. Uh, I, I can start and then uh, Ruslan can jump in and then Seva also can add stuff because actually like the three of us have been working, but we complement each other. So basically uh, what we saw is that currently there are like obviously different blockchains and all of them, they have like a way to visualize uh, what is going on with like the blockchain explorers. but. Uh, and even in Cardano, we have like a few. And for example, one of them, Adescan, is actually pretty good. But uh, the problem that we saw is that, we, as you guys know, we are going to move to Chelly. And we are going to have a staking and a lot of changes that are like unique to Cardano. And usually making like a blockchain explorer based in UTXO, which is like the accounting model that Cardano uses, and it's the same one that Bitcoin uses, is like uh, kind of a straightforward in so many ways. but. Uh, when Chelly comes with the staking, it's like a whole new protocol that you need to understand how it works so you can be, um, display the information correctly. So it's a lot, a lot of work. And what we were afraid as a move ago is that maybe this is going to be too much for open source project because uh, it, maybe some other projects are going to come up later on, but we need something as soon as available. So everyone can like see what's going on with the network because it's not just like, I'm going to check like a specific address and see how much money it has. But actually, you want to see how is the network evolving? Uh, how decentralized are we? How many transactions are going on? So you want something that tells you a story behind what's going on with staking. So that was like one of our inspirations to build CESA, that we could like build something that first it, it's going to tell us a story. So we don't want to take pictures of like, right now, this is what's going on. You want to have like a video. This is how it was a week ago. This is how it was two weeks ago. This is how it was three weeks ago. And then you have like, uh, you can see like uh, if it's uh, growing uh, and how fast it's growing. So uh, this is something that we usually don't see in blockchain explorers. And that's how why we want to start pushing for a lot of charts that's going to display information. And also we want to ex explain it what are you looking at and how this relates uh, to some of like uh, the critical components that we're trying to push with Cardano. And the second thing is that also uh, we have like different type of communities with like different backgrounds. For example, we have a community in the States, we have a community in Europe, but also we have communities in Asia, like for example, in Japan and people have like uh, different backgrounds and especially in, in Japan, maybe uh, a lot of people, they are not like that text savvy, but they're like more like financial, like uh, knowledgeable. And also in uh, maybe we have like people that are like doing like more research or like uh, they're traders. So we have like different type of people. And uh, this is what I call it like uh, when you do design personas. So we have like at least three different type of personas. And so uh, it's really important that we are not just pointing to like the global, a little savvy people, but also to like specific people from other countries. So uh, that's why we are wanting to push uh, CESA for a way that it could be easier for people that are not super tech savvy, or for example, that they are not even using a computer and they want to be using their phones. Because for example, in Japan, uh, they don't use that much desktops anymore. They use like their phones for everything. And that's why also in Geroy, we got to be, I think, like uh, the first top app for uh, financial, uh, uh, new apps in financial for with Geroy, which was like uh, very cool, but also a little surprising because like we got like a lot of downloads because yes, people use more cell phones and they were like waiting for that. So uh, that's the second part. And the third part is that also, what we want to see is that CESA could integrate with like wallets and other products. And uh, we are going to be, as in Murgo, uh, we are like uh, the venture arm of Cardano and we also work with partnerships. So we want to be able to uh, work with partners so they can connect to uh, CESA API or that CESA could talk to them. So we want to be 
make everything more interconnected and us as a more go like in life we are in like a really good position uh, to be pushing for that so uh that's like a little overview of why we wanted to do CESA and uh, we started working in CESA like uh early january so it's been uh, a lot of time already and uh, right now we have like most of uh practically CESA is already working and it's working pretty good and the second step that we are also already working on is that we can display all the information related to staking. So the idea is that as hopefully as soon as we have like testnet number three, which is the, uh, the one that's going to have like incentives, uh, CESA is going to release like a new button that it's going to allow you to change from mainnet to testnet. And you want to be able to like see everything that's going on in the testnet with CESA. And also obviously, uh, the plan is that as soon as uh, Chell is out, CESA is going to be uh, fully capable of following up with everything that's going on. And uh, the last thing uh, that I wanted to mention about CESA is that uh, we have been doing a lot of work with CESA, a lot, a lot of work, and we don't want other people to uh, go through the pain that we went through. So that's why we work with the Cardano Foundation, and they also understood pretty well uh, all the work that's required and that's why we are going to be like open sourcing most of CESA. So if someone else wants to uh, create like a blockchain explorer, maybe they want to focus on something different, then not to have to do all the work from scratch, but rather they're going to be able to use the open source part of CESA that we are also going to be using. And that way we're going to make sure that always been updated and that way they can come up with something uh, faster and uh, hopefully this is going to help uh, Cardano to have more uh, alternatives. And uh, we're like super grateful for um, the support from Cardano Foundation for this specific open sourcing project. Excellent. So basically there's two ways that the developers can interact with CESA. They can either go to the open source code base to write new features, or they can reach out to the API. Is that a good summary right there, basically? Uh, yeah, sort of. But uh, the open source part is that, for example, uh, if other uh, blockchain explorers, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, someone wants to create a new blockchain explorer focusing like different uh, type of settings, or maybe they just want to work with like a different way to visualize like staples. They don't need to build everything from scratch. So instead of uh, starting from zero, they can start from like 80% or like 90%. So they only need to build like that 10%. And also for other current blockchain explorers, uh, it's going to be difficult to update to uh, the new code base. So maybe they could even use like the open source version so they can like update their cells and continue working. What if a stake pool operator um, wants to put a widget inside their stake pool web page? Can they reach out to the CESA API and extract the chart that they want to display alongside their stake pool? Uh, uh, so uh, the CESA, uh, we are going to be open sources uh, the code, but uh, through other projects uh, that we are also going to open source, we are going to be open source like everything related to like APIs. So uh, the thing in coding is that maybe you can be using like different sources or like different type of APIs. And we have been working with like the two most like well known so far. Uh, the first one is like just a REST API, which is like uh, what every developer uses, but also uh, we want to be using uh, cooler stuff and the stuff that are like uh, more modern. So, uh, for example, for CESA, something like really cool that we did is that we are using GraphQL, which is like uh, I can try to explain in like super simple terms. So, for example, uh, when you do a REST API, you every, every time you get like the same uh, format in the response. So, for example, if you are asking for like a transaction information and it has like 40 fields, you're going to get the 40 fields. So, uh, it's not really uh, wise in like bandwidth because sometimes you're going to get information that you don't need. But uh, with GraphQL, what is like pretty cool is that you can tell uh, uh, the software uh, what actual parameters you want to receive. So instead, of, if you want to receive some specific information from a transaction, you just ask for that specific information. So instead of getting 40 parameters, maybe you only get three. So this. Uh, makes everything uh, actually work faster and also is like uh, cleaner. And uh, for like the developers, we don't need to have like, I don't know, 50 different methods to grab information because uh, with one method, you can select which things you want, which things you don't want. Uh, so also this like 
uh, the part that no one sees uh, or the normal user doesn't see from SaySay is something that we're also bringing up and also we want to be open source is 